continuing with the problems from on the quotient rule. So we see one function divided by another. So we can, and we can't with the quotient rule we can't clean this up anymore. That's a, it's as simplified as we're going to get it. So we derive our top. We get the minus three, then multiply by the function in the denominator, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. And that's all over the denominator squared. So again, these ones are not too bad. We can clean it up. So minus 721x, minus 12, minus 7 times the 7 gives us 49, and minus 7 times minus 3 gives us 21x. And our 21x's cancel. We get minus 61 over 7x plus 4 all squared. So we can't simplify any further than that. This one's a little bit different. So, only in the fact that we've got 5x plus 8 over 3x minus 1 already squared. So, we take our denominator and square that again. So, that's going to give us 3x minus 1 to the power of 4. But when we go to derive the denominator, so we derive our numerator, gives us the 5 times the denominator. Now, minus, we do our, de our numerator and we times it by the derivative of the denominator. But because it's already squared, we're going to have to use the product rule. So we, uh, sorry, chain rule. We bring the power down, subtract one from the power, the, and then multiply by the derivative of three x minus one. So that's why it starts to be a little bit more complicated, because we've got to use the chain rule inside the quotient rule. Not too bad, because it's squared there. I will expand it, um, so it's not too bad because it's, it's they're not too hard. I expand these brackets with the 6 out the front and then multiply it through. Just be careful about your sign. So 6 times 15 minus 90 times the, minus, times the positive 19 gives us minus 114. But 6 minus 6 times minus 8 gives us positive 48. So just be really careful about the signs, not to get them wrong. Don't expand the bottom, but then collect our terms up the top there. So this one's a little bit more difficult again because you're getting lots of powers now. But again, every time we derive, we have to use the chain rule. So get our denominator, 10x, 10 minus 7x to the power of 3 all squared because it's the denominator squared. And then we derive the top, which would be 2 lots of 8, x minus 8 to the power of 1 times the derivative of x minus 8 times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So we bring the 3 down, subtract 1 from the power, times the derivative of 10x, 10 minus 7x, which is minus 7. I'll clean this up and get 21, minus 21 times the minus gives us a positive 21, and the 2 out the front. I'm not going to expand this one, though. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to... We might be able to... If we're really clever with your algebra, you'll be able to start doing a bit of cancelling there. But again, we're not too worried. You can factorise that if you need. Again, we will see things like this when we do some applications later on in the course. But generally, we don't have to worry too much about it unless we have to set it equal to zero and do some work with it there. So don't panic about that. 3x minus 4 all squared over 3 outside of 2x plus 3 to the power of 3. Again, take your denominator and square it. So 3 will square to give you 9. 2x plus 3 all cubed gives us all cubed, then squared, gives us to the power of 6. And then we derive our first function. So derive our numerator, gives us the 2, subtract 1 from the power, times the derivative of 3x minus 4, uh, times the second function. So the 3 outside 2x plus 3 all cubed, minus our numerator, times the derivative here, which would be the 3 comes down and multiplies by the 3 there. We subtract 1 from the power and derive by 2... Uh, but multiply by the derivative of 2x plus 3. So 2 times 3 times 3 gives us the 18. 3 times 3 times 2 gives us 18. And again, don't expand our brackets. That's just going to that'll be too crazy. Leave it like that. That's a, quite happy to do that. Because, again, we're not looking to... We're just looking to derive it. We're not looking to clean it up any too, any too much at this point in time. So there we go. There's all our rules for finding... The derivatives of functions so all those situations we're not finished with deriving in the course because we will start applying later on all these rules to different types of applications but also we'll look at doing exponential log trig functions with all these rules so don't forget these rules keep them in mind you're going to do lots of them 
you we didn't prove these rules there in for product or a quotient rule but if you want that the, the book want to get them the book or go do a search on the internet that will give us the that will give you the, all the proofs you don't need to know the proofs you do need to know how to apply these formulas and you need to apply them very well